Depending on the job we're trying to do, it can either be easy or really difficult to take that computation and distribute it across many different machines. Jobs that are really, really easy to distribute across many machines are sometimes referred to as being embarrassingly parallel, meaning that if you can't find a way to split this up and do it on multiple machines, you're just not trying very hard. So let me give you some examples. Let's say I have a bunch of numbers. Um, so I have a, you know, a uh, bunch of numbers here, and you can imagine I'd have a million different numbers, and I want to add up all of these numbers. I want to know what the total is. I could do this on one machine. I could just add them up from one end to another. But this is a job that's actually very, very easy to split up. So how do I do it? So for example, let's say I have four computers here, and I'm trying to figure out how to divide this job up between them. Um, and I want to uh, make the job go faster. So on one machine, it's going to take a certain amount of time. And the amount of time it takes depends on how many numbers I have to add. So if I break this up into four pieces, I have this guy add up the first quarter of the numbers. I have this guy add up the second quarter of the numbers. I have this guy add up the third quarter, and this guy add up the fourth quarter. So I take my list of numbers, and I break it into four pieces. I give each one of these pieces to one of these computers. It adds up all those pieces. Now, if adding up all of these took some amount of time, then adding them up here is going to take a quarter of that amount of time for each machine, assuming that they're running at the same speed. And then what do I do? Well, then I can combine the results because the, the result of the calculation is just adding up all the results uh, from these different computers. So if I want the total sum, I just take the sum from A plus the sum from B plus the sum from C plus the sum from D. This is quite fast. It's only four additions, and I'm done. So this is an example of a problem that is very easy to split up between multiple machines. Happily, search is another example of a type of problem that's pretty easy to split up among multiple machines. Because when I'm looking for things online, I can split up the pages between the different machines. Those machines can find the contents of the page that, and, and build search indexes for that page. And then those indexes can be combined later. And in fact, even combining the indexes can be done on multiple machines. So search and adding up large numbers of uh, uh, num groups of numbers are examples of problems that are pretty easy to divide across multiple machines. Now, obviously, big search companies like Google and Microsoft have spent decades perfecting this process. And so there are some challenges to making this really fast. But fundamentally, uh, happily, this problem can be broken up fairly easily um, and done in a way that's easy to, to divide. Now, what constitutes a problem that cannot be uh, broken up. So one of the really important characteristics of this problem is that while these machines are computing their subtasks, so if I give machine A a quarter of the numbers, it doesn't have to communicate with machine B, C, or D while it's doing that at all. And that's really important because once I split this task up, if these machines need to talk to each other a lot, that communication is pretty slow compared with local computation that they're doing. And that will slow down the process quite a bit. Um, you'll see all this machine has to do is add up its numbers and then return the result. The other thing that's really nice about this problem is that the result is much smaller than the inputs. So I might have given this machine a quarter million numbers to add up. And the result is a single number. So it's very fast for it to communicate that result back to me, and then I just add up all the results from the different computers that I assigned these different tasks to. So those are characteristics of the problem that are part of what makes a particular task embarrassingly parallel. In contrast, if these computers had to communicate with each other a lot while they were doing this task, so let's say them I gave a different job, they gave them a different job to do, but the job required that they constantly talk to each other, and there was a lot of communication going on. In that case, that job actually might be slower to run by splitting it up across multiple machines. And there are famous examples of tasks that are like this. So these tasks are known as, in contrast to being embarrassingly parallel, such tasks are sometimes referred to as inherently serial. They cannot be easily divided up. So here's one example. 
There's a problem in, uh, in physics that's known as the three-body problem. And so the three-body problem is, let's say I have a couple of different masses. These could be planets or asteroids or whatever. And what I want to do is I want to figure out how are they going to move. So they're going to exert gravity on each other. And over time, their positions are going to change. And so this is known as the three-body problem. The three-body problem is something that is very, very hard to split up across, across multiple machines. Because here's the problem. Every time one of these guys moves, the other two bodies need to know where it is so they can make their own calculations. And so the process of sort of determining how these things will move requires all this communication between the uh, computers that would be maintaining the positions of each one of these objects. And so this is something that's very, very slow to split up. Again, happily, search falls into the category of something that is fairly easy to split up across multiple machines. That's what allows us to use tens or hundreds of thousands of machines and data centers all over the world to do search constantly.